shifted lens, uh, you get all this real kind of blur on the outside. What is, what is and a this, much, uh, this, uh, it's, this is a plantation down in Savannah called Wormslow, which is, uh, I believe, one of the oldest, if not the oldest in the area. And that's the driveway. <laughs> I mean, it's like a mile of, of these, I don't know what kind of trees there, but literally it's like you just get on the road and drive and drive and drive, and, and that's just the driveway down into the plantation. Wow. It's pretty amazing. There's some other questions over here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, John, I love your work. <coughs> my name is Roberto Long. In my recent, in throughout the years, in my recent visits to the galleries and museums, the photos seem to be getting, you know, larger and larger. Absolutely. I personally find them appealing. Yeah. But I want, the question I'm asking you is, is what's the motive? Is there a public, private demand for these? Is it a case of my photo was bigger than yours? <laughs> <laughs> You've hit the nail on the head, actually, with the last one. Uh, there was. There was a tendency in, in galleries, uh, photos, a, a big photo used to be considered like a 20 by 24 inch photo, it used to be big. And that, a lot of that had to do with, uh, it's, a lot of it comes out of the digital issue in that uh, photo paper actually, uh, you know, the paper that you put in, under in a larger, like a conventional photography or traditional photography, uh, came in sizes, so 11 by 14, 16 by 20, 20 by 24. And actually handling that paper is very tricky because uh, it's got to be dipped in the solutions and that sort of thing. And, and if uh, the, I actually have a dark room here and the largest eye print is 20 by 24 on that kind of paper. And it is a total pain in the ass. It's hard to manage because the, the paper wrinkles easily, it bends, it's hard to... So it, it used to be that getting prints larger than that was, was technically very difficult. Um, and uh, very costly in that most uh, photographers could only manage up to like a 16 by 20 in their own darkroom. Here I said, as, as I said, I've got, I can do 20, 24, but anything bigger than that, you have to flip the enlarger so it projects on the wall and total blackout the, the, the studio and, and, you know, pin up the paper and then take it in. The, it was a process, a real pain in the ass. But with, with digital printers now, you can print much larger. Uh, very easily, you know, you hook it up to the computer, hit go, and uh, and then you have these printers that just, move, move, you know, you set it up to go, and it can print like a, a 42 by 60 inch print while you go to lunch, you know, that kind of thing. Um, photographs, also, there is a tendency. Um, you take a, a, a rather mediocre image and blow it up six by eight feet. It looks pretty good, you know. <laughs> Uh, th there's a lot of that going on. My, my wife is a curator and she and I have been to a number of shows over the past years where, you know, we'll walk in and it is, as you said, fairly large photos. Uh, there was one show we went to where I think uh, all the photos were like five by five square. And the photographs themselves were pretty dull. They were pretty dull. They were just of trees and, and they were shot a little bit arty but they um, if they had been 12 by 12 inches we wouldn't you know we could have would have kind of looked in the room and go, ah, whatever they, they would have been not interesting at all but because they, the scale of them was so big they actually got more interesting personally I think that's uh, there's been a big backlash with that yeah, yeah it, it's a problem because it's starting to come Anyone can print big now, and, and, and also, I mean, large prints like that, uh, to get them printed commercially by a good lab, a, a, a four by six foot print can be four or five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. So you get, all of a sudden you get artists who, they take mediocre, mediocre photographs, they drop them off at a lab, they get these big eight foot prints made, and all of a sudden they're good artists, uh, just because they can afford the prints, you know, that kind of thing. It, it's a big problem. You see a lot of bad work that's big. The, the galleries, by the you know, most like this crossover from commercial to fine art photography that we've been talking about. A lot of these photographers are showing in galleries that are showing painting and video and things that. So when you have very small photographs and you're having painting exhibitions or things like that, I think there's also been a jump for a photo to kind of push up the scale. And I think where it becomes, you know, it's a very different context than when things are in a magazine or in a book. 
it's all of a sudden in the fine art world, and you have to compete with paintings or with walls or installations, and you know that's very hard to do when you have something only small. But I do think there's been a move. You know, there's a lot of German photographers, Thomas Ruff, people like that. I can give you a list that have these enormous photographer. You know, enormous, really. Wasn't uh, the big Richard Prince one? I think that one's huge. Yeah, yeah there's a, there. many of them. But I do think that there's been a move now to photographers kind of reducing their scale again. Because so I think people are starting to have the same reaction that John is describing. Well, of, you know, it, does it make it a good photograph? Not necessarily. Well, my solution to that is that people should just not show bad photographs, small or, or little. Um, I think that would be the best way to go. But uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Um, the, it's interesting you bring that up, though, because the uh, drag queen photographs, um, the show that I'm having uh, opening up in April, these are the, the photos, these are the eight photos that I'm looking to show. But for the first time ever, I'm going to have very large prints. These are going to be, uh, well, relatively large. They're going to be uh, four by six feet. Really? Wow. Yeah, I know. So if you if you figure, I don't know if we can get this down to four by six feet. That's probably very yeah, close right there, yeah. right? Maybe a little. That's maybe a little big, but they're going to be that big. And the, it's a very. I don't know if anybody's familiar with PS One Point Two. It's very small. The gallery is twenty by twenty feet. So there's going to be. Uh, we're still working this out, but it's going to be like one up and one one down. So so two photos and. Uh, I'm still deliberating that, but for the first time, I'm showing large prints, and I'm curious to see how, how it's going to fly and what it's going to look like. Uh, because I I don't want it to appear that you know they're just sort of okay photographs made big. You know, uh, it's a danger. Um, there's there's too much of that. Uh, but I, in answer to your question, I think the short answer is. Technically, logistically, it was it was just much more difficult to do, and now it's easier. Uh, so people are taking advantage of it. Do you think there there will be some reason to have large photo as aesthetic value? Um, yeah, I think absolutely. In that, depending on the context, I mean, you know, if you take a photograph this big and put it on this wall, it's kind of lost. Whereas a photograph that big certainly makes an impact. So it. It depends on where it's being shown in a, in a museum, in a gallery, uh, or in somebody's home. So it'd be like practicality. Yeah, practicality. Uh, you know, your choice of aesthetic. You know, uh, there's a collector we know who I sold um, five photographs to. They were uh, they were silver prints, ones that I made here, and they were uh, 16 by 24. And he had a particular hallway that he wanted them to go in, you know, as you walk down the hallway. And it's relatively narrow. I mean, the hallway's, I don't know, five feet wide. But they're, and he, he wanted large photographs, but any bigger than that, you know, you're only saying five. You can't get back far enough to actually see them, you know. So he wanted as large as he could get, but he didn't want something this big because you'd never be able to see it. You know? So there are practical reasons, depending on where it's being exhibited, that, that you know, would would impact uh, what what size